Okay, guys, let's all begin then. First of all, <coughs> sorry. First of all, let me introduce myself to you. I'm Sangeeta Verma. I've done my MPhil in management, MBA with banking and finance. And in the slide itself, you can see my work experiences along with different industry and sectors. And recently, I'm associated with KDA organization. And it's my seventh year running. Along with that, learn with, with learn with, and as a freelancer. So, friends, uh, today's topic in finance is investment and return on investment. So let's begin. Before going to what is uh, like a return on investment, let's understand the concept first. What is investment and how we decide about doing the investment in different sector, whether that is uh, any real estate or uh, stocks, uh, then banks or any in different industries and how we calculate it and how we understand that this is the particular filled out or sector where we can invest. So like if we see one framework has to be understood by all that a good investment creates value for the fixed form by earning a return that is greater than its hurdle rate. Means, suppose you invested five rupees on anything and you think that, uh, yeah, after uh, two, three months, I will be able to make it 50. So how you do that? What are the things you need to understand? So hurdle rate is one rate, which is like minimum rate where you will earn the return perfect designed rate in order for the return but you expect more and you, you get more so we are always dependent on investment portfolios right and we have to understand the concept that the value increased value by opening the new store that we analyze are always has to be have a greater and we think that being a good business assessment or better investment analysis analyst, it's very important that we assess our expectations about the projects higher than the actual performance. Means, uh, um, actual performance is likely to be very different from the expected performance. Some investments do better than expected and some investments do worse. If the existing investment or projects which are going or running through are making return in excess of their hurdle rate, we look at the source of their excess return which means we consistent excess return on projects come from competitive advantage that the firm has matured and over timing understanding those competitive advantages are critical not just to analyze existing investment but to protecting those advantages and those preserving excess returns on future investments when existing projects are earning less than the hurdle rate, we examine three criteria, three issues has to be considered. Like, what are they? We first look at the why the projects did not deliver the return that were anticipated to them when they were initially considered. Chance is clearly one possible reason we also look at systematic bias and earns in the investment analysis process that might have contributed to the problem 
right firstly then secondly what we look we look at how firms can act to reduce the likelihood of investing in the wrong projects then finally we examine that what we should do with those investments that have already identified a bad investment should we sell those investment to the highest bidder liquidate the assets or continue with the investment so analyzing the firms existing projects we always try to invest we even analyze the individual projects using cash flow with the project portfolio and while analyzing we see what are the criteria where we can think of doing a proper investment in order to have an excessive amount of return means competitive product market barriers to industry and good projects along with them cost advantages capital requirement economic scale product differentiation and access to the legal and government barrier access to distribution channels and different competitive advantages market are the good reasons to decide that higher rate of return will be expected so you understood that what is investment why we it is investment now what is return on investment return on investment is the basic measurement of the gain on your investment which lets you describe whether you should invest more money or continue with the investment or withdraw the money from the same means you invested sorted amount on anything and what you did was like you evaluated after certain period of time that your return on investment was quite good as you expected you got more than that so that makes you able to decide whether you should remain in that or switch to another or you continue with that or amount has to be increased on that particular investment means you see the sales you see the returns you calculate interest you measure every consequences you see the progress the success is pattern or capital amount of your company is been increasing or not you see to that so roi is the amount of profit the amount of benefit the amount of ratio of investment is higher the return is higher than as per your invested amount roi is like net income on the investment by cost of investment even it is calculated with the revenue minus cost of goods sales investment gain by investment base so there are many formulas and many different formulas has been like combined to calculate roi what are the uses why return of investment is important to evaluate after an investment is done in different sectors at the end of the day your amount has to be increased that has to be understood by you what are the uses simplest measurement for an investor evaluate different investment opportunities that roi makes you to decide and choose and create the opportunities on particular investment or other other investment too calculator or compares the return with previous projects and periods signal for monitoring the investment what is the benefit you measure the competitive annual in the market is simple but also effective at the same time has simplest calculation in financial ratio now though roi is important even it has some limitations 
limitation like the time factor is completely ignored which is a major drawback of the measurement of roi different calculation process of the roi makes it confusing to a different person yes people might get confused in order to for the roi because for ho for hr it's different for uh, you know banking they calculate in a different way for manufacturing industry they calculate roi in different way for taxes and roi is in different way so it the formula might confuse you but i'll try to make it little simpler for you so guys what is it investment and what are the major things you have to see before roi that is return on investment i hope this much is clear to you can i go to the next slide okay now what are the objectives of investment why investments are done and what is the objective of that okay my voice is breaking might be some net issues now is it okay okay good so investment objective you have to see that you are first you have to see your income label so if your investments are proper what happens your income label increases you need to have a tolerance of risk sometime you might risk your investment means you expected but you got the actual which was fixed that much only higher was not made by you tax liability investment time horizon liquidity payment and total wealth these are the objective means why you are investing has to be properly calculated by you in order that you are trying to increase your income your expenses are being like financed by someone and you need to pay them so that's why you are thinking or you are in a favor of uh, doing investment and increasing your saving you're fighting inflations or you're trying to reduce your tax liability so investment objectives along with the purpose of investing has to be understood by any individual or a company very properly then only higher return on investment by that particular person or company is possible and roi is always in a circular form means it's always like giving taking giving taking way that is you do investment you get better amount of return when you are getting return you again do investment and you again get higher rate of return some so that is why risk tolerance sometime might be as per your expected sometimes might not and there's a particular tree of return on investment roi is like if you divide profits by investments you get it roi sales by mar multiplied by margin with the profit you get roi price and cost minus multiplied by sales and margins with the profit you get roi now let's understand it with the measurement of balance like roi suppose return on investment measure measure value of an investment positive roi good return negative roi cost in revenue so you are little if it is positive your returns are good if you it's like if your cost and revenue are not properly evaluated and analyzed you get out to be a negative roi so how it is cost and benefits if you get higher amount as per your investment as per the cost you applied at certain project certain uh, uh, programs or in a different 
like you know whether it is in marketing investment real estate stocks science technology whatever it is whatever sector and whatever finance you sales of the finance of particular companies so benefits minus cost and when benefits minus cost is divided with the cost and if you want to get the percentage you have to do it with the 100 one right so 100 so major return on roi are based on marketing investments real estate social goods and science and even time clock measures okay return on investment that is if it was for employees how you calculate return on investment how it is calculated you see uh, what are the certain numbers of employees and average hours per week and work weeks per year then you calculate payroll hourly wages then total investment in tcp so return on investment is only not in financial field right return on investment is even in human factor also so everywhere it is the return on investment like uh, if you see it, our personal life our parents are investing on us in, se- in the sector wise of education good life like you said everything and they expect some return if we pro- we do great in our career we do great in our life that that might not have value but, or in the terms of numerology but with the behavior attitude and other things that is a return for them same way in financing if 100 rupees is invested and we were able to get certain amount of benefit by the cost investment we did and the return is higher so what we will say we will say good return was there so we are positive in on the roi am i clear i hope uh, you are not getting confused okay now what is annualized return on investment when return on investment is adjusted to a period of one year then it is known as annualized return on investment return on investments from different investment options made for various lengths of periods can be brought to a common format in forms of an annualized roi what is the importance of annualized er annualized roi it takes compounding factor into consideration it helps in making comparison between investments and what is the limitation it can prove to be misleading in case of new investment avenues or in times of a turbulent economic environment so basically if investment is adjusted for a year the return is in on the investment is adjusted that is annualized and it might become some like little sometimes risky for you so how what is the formula ending value divided by beginning value coefficient of one power red means ending date minus starting date 365 days of a year and then minus one value so you see an example suppose mr x buys a stock of rupees for us dollar 10 on 1st january 2020 and sells it for dollar 12 after 200 days so it was 365 days in a year and we did it for a 200 days so the normal roi will be 12 that you can see is an investment minus 10 that is the cost of this stock multiplied by 100 what it will be divided by 10 and multiplied by 100 it is 20% normal roi but when you do it annualized 12 12 divided by 10 the cost of stock was 10 but it was sell for 12 so 
12 by 10 power 1 slash 200 days. He holded it up till 200 days and after 200 days he sold it out. So 200 divided by 365 days in a year minus 1. So 36.50. So you can see there is an increment of 16 point five zero percent of return on investment am i clear to all please revert back if there is any confusion okay then i hope uh, with the formula and with the example it is clear to you all so let's go to next. Over here, you have to understand that Mr. X bought in 10 rupees, sold it out in 12. If you see in a normal I concept, you will see 2 rupees was increased, right? But when you go it with the percentage value, how much it was? It was 20% in normal. And in annualized, it came out to be 36.50. Means 16.50 was much more because of annualized. Now, let's see the actual formula of ROI. Return on investment. Calculated whether you are getting more money back than you are putting in. That is actually the return on investment. So how you do it? Amount gained by amount is spent divided by amount is spent multiplied by 100. What does it mean? Amount gain means the amount of income that has been generated by an investment on the share or on the campaign or on the project, right? Now, amount spent comes out to be the total amount spent on an investment for a particular project share, deventure, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, missing uh, then after uh, banks or anything it is like. So what is the purpose of calculating? It is totally to understand the investment was fruitful or not. So how do we measure the rate of return on investment? The real rate of interest is the exchange rate between Future consumption, that is future dollar, and present consumption means current dollar. Market forces determine this rate. Obviously, the rate is always been determined because of the market. Today, if you are like uh, willing to exchange a certain payment of dollar uh, hundred, today for a certain payment of dollar hundred and four for tomorrow. Obviously, you know that uh, currency rates, currency value keeps on fluctuating in front in case of dollar. And that dollar fluctuation directly or indirectly affects every country's currency. Now, there are different formulas for return on investment. If you go with the net income way, how it is like ROI is also calculated if income before interest and taxes that is EBIT has been that that we say net operating income is divided with the average operating assets means cash accounts receivables inventory plant and equipments and other productive machineries in that way also ROI is calculated and return on investment, when we see, it's like we can modify our original formula slightly if it comes in the balance it way, margins and turnovers like that. So ROI is margin into turnover. Margin means net operating income divided by sales and turnover is sales divided by average operating assets. When you multiply these two, you get the ROI. So suppose dollar forty two as a divided by dollar six hundred or six thousand. You say it is a 
margin and if turnover dollar 6 6 by dollar 2 it's like turnover so roi is 21% when you get a value you have to multiply that with 100% so we increased roi from 15% to 21% so how much was increased 6% increment you can see over there and in, if you see with the sales bonds the ventures calculation rate of return formula comes out to be current value minus original value divided by original value multiplied by 100 now let's see a certain calculations over here in the return of investment the amount of profit earned in return for the amount of capital invested so return on investment comes out to be net income by amount invested in 200 example is what is the return on investment for the acme corporation if it had dollar 150 lakhs in sales and dollar 120 lakhs in expenses on its business investment of dollar 450 lakhs so solution you know the calculation right you will calculate it directly with first you will find out net income how is that calculated net income tell me net income was calculated how it was calculated should i go up again tell me anyone tell me how it is calculated net income is calculated by amount gained by amount spent and that should be divided by amount invested how much it came when you do the calculation is 6.7 percent and if you go it with the like uh, uh, operating incomes and investment also you can calculate the roi suppose a company has a net in operating income of dollar 30000 and average operating assets dollar 2 lakhs and sales of dollar 5 lakhs so ri roi comes out to be net operating income divided by average operating asset and how does you get net operating income you get net operating income how how you get it sales minus very good no one is returning back answer tell me how it is calculated what ma'am please repeat how net operating income is calculated operating income as expenses yes so that's how you calculate roi in terms of sales operating assets and every return on investment as per the sectors the formulas as per the uh, financial things the formula changes out we have to be very clear with that and when it comes to the buy and sell of stock how it is calculated you invested dollar 2000 in stocks one year later you sold the stock for dollar 1200 so your net profit was 800 correct yourself over here it is going in negative minus 800 For two thousand, you sold out for twelve hundred. So your net profit is already how much? Minus eight hundred. Negative. Net loss. Net loss. It is not in profit, right? It's going in negative. So when you calculate ROI, that six hundred, that upon two thousand multiplied by hundred, comes out to be thirty percent. If you see in the Instrupedia one, 
when it is calculated in a software. You know that ROI is always calculated from an ending value. You remember the formula of beginning value and ending value? Right? With the help of software, it is always easy. You just don't have to do anything. You just have to keep the value and the calculations comes up, right? But in the manual, you have to remember the formula. Software, it has inbuilt formulas for every calculations. So you see over here, formula used is with the help of Excel keys or you say with the help of software. The ROI is always calculated from ending value. Therefore, as of one year end of 2018, the ROI is 15% because it helped with the help of ending value of 2017 once. The calculation starts anew with each ending value. So if we expect year end 2020 to have an ending value of 82, then from our beginning value of 100, we have an ROI of 18%. Directly, we can't jump to 2020. We have to keep on calculating and then reach to the final ROI. Am I clear? Guys, any confusion? No, OK. Then let's go to another slide. Now return, suppose in a company, you are working at a certain, um, basically to understand, OK, in a certain position. And you were asked to organize uh, uh, two festivals at your company. And you were asked how much of investment you need to invest and what will be the return on that investment so you prepare on an excel sheet you compare right like from two ones you're comparing actually so gain from investment sales of art you sold in first festival you sell sold dollar ten thousand in second festival you sold out dollar twenty thousand you are actually calculated for an uh, like a third festival, but you compare it. So cost of investment were festival fees, travel and expenses, cost of art and advertising, you did everything. So total cost of investment you calculated. Now, if you have to calculate profit, what was the profit? Total cost of investment was dollar six thousand, And but by selling an art, you got dollar ten thousand. So four thousand is a profit to you in festival one, and in festival two, you got five thousand profit. Now, how you will calculate gross gross profit margin first? Profit plus gain from investment, four thousand plus fourteen thousand, forty percent acquired. In second festival, 25% acquired. Now, return on investment, gain from investment minus cost of investment divided by cost of investment. You will compare over here. Which was fruitful, festival one or festival two? So, gain from investment was dollar ten thousand, And then total means cost of investment was dollar six thousand. So obviously, six thousand was your four thousand was your actual profit from the investment. You are using the formula and you are calculating. In festival one, you got sixty-seven percent of ROI, and in festival two, you got thirty-three percent of ROI. So which one is higher? Am I making you clear or you are getting confused? Guys, revert me back. If you are getting confused, please revert me back.
which one is higher the roi obviously festival one roi is higher why no see cost of investment in first festival was only six thousand but in second festival it was fifteen thousand though profit was higher in festival two your actual profit person means profit margin was higher in festival one that is why festival one's roi is higher than festival two cleared yes now see in return on investment formula in a way of benefit ones if you are in another sector like you organized a program and then you are calculating the roi roi formula over here will be net program benefit by program cost right so cost of cost per program there were 25 participants and which was like benefit for program one year so you run the complete program for one year with the 25 participants so what became the formula obviously benefits minus cost divided by cost multiplied by 100 how much was the roi return on investment was 161 percent are you getting the it's Smart. just that you have to understand the formula applicable. Okay, then. You all know that with the help of technology, we all are on a way that the calculations, the graphs, the charts have become very easy, right? So in Excel sheet, most of the way, ROI's calculation comes out with the applicable of formula with the graph and chart. So it has become easy. We just need to know the formulas, know the concepts, and then direct applicable on Excel sheet. Now, these are the charts and summaries with the help of software, which is done. That is SAP, some and ERP, and financial softwares are there. And even accounting software also helps you to calculate it so let's see in the excel sheet how roi is with calculator of different years let me expand it to you now over here see initial cost cost of capital estimated nest cost saving depreciation estimated and increased revenue is given to you now with the help of till six years you have been asked to calculate it increased revenue cost saving depreciation interest and net revenue you should be understanding that in first year it's like we can't mostly practically not it technically if you will say we it is becomes very easy for the cost saving depression and interest calculation we just assume it so actual investments interest revenue collection are seen with the second year and by the time we reach to sixth year how it is calculated we are applied the formula and that formula might not be visible over here at the time of slide capture but the formulas are inbuilt sometimes we store it for the longer period and then we calculate the roi in first year roi was negatively 100 percent 96.98 when we reach only in sixth year 15.10 percent of roi has been seen in positive side till four five year four to five year the calculations comes out to be negative because no proper calculation was done in this case and when it is chart wise obviously with that same calculation you can create a chart anticipated one how you see it
these are all with the help of software investment portfolio chart return for the return of return on investment and the first slide is with the help of accounting balance sheet that is trading and profit and loss account trading account and balance sheet the roi has been calculated now roi calculator different way that is net income method original investment value and net income capital gain method over there we need original share price and current share price total return method here we need original share price the dividends received and current share price and when it comes to annualized roi we need original share price current share price purchase date sell date and then it comes out to be annual roi even the rate rates of return on investment and human capital is also like i said in earlier our parents invest on us on our pre school school post school right so over there also opportunity costs of funds and flows are seen so how we are investing the our capital how our parents are investing how our, our, our uh, companies are investing on us according to that in a human concept also we can see the return on investment portfolio so thank you for attending the session and all of you have a very good evening but over here certain things has to be very clear when you go for the investment return you need to understand the threat of entry you need to understand industry competitiveness even threat to substitute and buyer's power you need to understand it very clearly and whenever you analyze for any investment return you analyze it with the existing investment competitive strength sustainability of comp competitive strength then underperforming investments along with getting information on competitive strength and return the return has as positive and negative impact as per your evaluation on any of the investment any queries guys anything to ask any confusion please revert back okay guys i'll be sharing these slides with the organizers if any confusion any doubt please revert back to them and uh, someone asked me questions also